Hey everyone, welcome back to 6-5 on the Road, sponsored by Solidime. I'm Lisa Martin here with one of my favorite co-hosts, Keith Townsend. How are you? Looking dapper, right? I am doing well. I'm with one of my favorite people in the industry, Matt. We, we, we should be doing this in like an Airstream, a <laughs> teardrop, something. That's you know, right. that, was, that was our brand doing the- That was the, our brand. Yeah. The pandemic brand. The, the pandemic brand. Matt Baker joins us once again, SVP, AI enablement at Dell Technologies. Welcome back. Hey, it's great to be here. Thanks for having me. So we've we've talked we've heard a lot about what Dell's AI ambitions. Sure. What it's doing there, the AI PCs, what's happening in storage networking, sure. customers that it's helping to mm -hmm. really navigate this journey. But we want to kind of take a peek into Dell's internal journey. Yeah. Drinking your own champagne. What can oh, you do? Champagne. Share there? there you go. Yeah. Yeah, what it, we can't say eat your own dog food anymore. You can, but the champagne oh. reference, I just feel mm, it's yeah. a little classy. Lisa, I, I just feel like eating your own dog food would be more on brand for you. I you just, would think so. You know, I'm a dog mom. Yeah, but I, I like champagne. Well, yeah, I like I, you can do both. <laughs> Anyhow, so yes, the, the cool thing about this, this job that I stepped into last year is that I'm not just working on what we're offering to our customers. That's a big part of it. But I'm also driving our internal programs. Um, and... Those internal programs are tied to, in essence, a broad modernization effort for the company overall. And that modernization effort is in service of, you know, solidifying the company for the next 40 years, if you will. In, you know, so we're not doing AI for AI's sake, but certainly AI influenced what we believed we could do to modernize the company for the next 40 years. And so We've been working tirelessly over the last, in essence, almost a year now to identify the key areas that we want to attack first. We focused on sales, in essence, you know, optimizing the day in the life of a sales maker, you know, improving and making more quick the CPQ or the configure quote, uh, price quote process. Um, we are also looking at services. As you can imagine, we have tons of products and unfortunately products do have challenges and problems sometimes that you have to resolve. People call in, we've created solutions that help our agents get to an answer much more quickly by reasoning over vast amounts of data about issues, challenges that our products might have. So it, it, it improves the day in the life of an agent, but it also makes our customers much happier because we solve their problems much more quickly. Uh, content, You're, you all are in the content business. AI is an amazing tool to, you know, automate the creation of content and really, you know, put turbocharge that process. And then last, we have a ton of software developers and the opportunity to improve the productivity of software developers is huge. So those were the four initial areas. Obviously that has to run somewhere. So we have had a fifth area that sort of sat below all of those, which is to develop the internal platform on which we run all of our AI and generative AI workloads. And so that was born out of another capability that we call DSX or the data science experience at Dell, which is a part of Dell Digital, our IT organization. So it's been great working across the business and now we've added additional areas with supply chain, sort of digital twin development, uh, finance, you know, just doing forecasting at scale and then last one I'm really excited about is our online efforts. So obviously Dell.com operates at an insane scale. We have billions of visits every year. And that represents therefore one of the largest potential workloads that we will develop. But I'm more excited not just by the scope and scale of it, but by reimagining the commerce experience for our customers from an experience that is driven by the internet paradigm of the last few decades, which is point, click, point, click, 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 tap, 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 to one that is more of a sort of a choose your own adventure journey that you can interact with more seamlessly. Um, and so those are the rough buckets that we're operating in. And the cool thing about this job is I see both sides. I'm influencing what we're doing in CSG and ISG but that's informed by what we're learning in real time with our own efforts. So it becomes this fantastic flywheel of innovation. And we're just, you know, our goal is to accelerate the adoption of AI for everyone. So all of those learnings, we just freely send out to our customers and say, hey, 
this is the way you should probably proceed. Why skin your knee? We already did. Right. You know, don't, 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 don't make the same mistakes that right. we did. Yeah. So Matt, you started out with a lot of areas that seem around internal productivity, kind of like the big thing. That, and the thing that most people are excited about is that customer facing Yes. experience. Is that by design? Why not start with the thing that, you know, when we hear about, you know, all, you know a trillion tokens and all the investment in AI and GPUs, CPUs, yeah, yeah. et cetera, it seems like the, the justification is that, that new market. But that's not where you folks started your journey. No, no. I mean, we started the journey understanding that this is a truly transformational period in, in the industry. And you know, people are like, what is this like? Is it like virtualization? Is it like cloud? And I'm like, no, 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 this is like internet. This is fundamental to change. And if we want to be successful in the new market, we need to be experts. And what better way to become experts than to, as you say, drink your own champagne, yeah. right? Like <laughs> do it ourselves. So our focus has been on that internal innovation because, look, this is new, daunting to some people. All the tokens, like, what's the token? It's a fraction of a word. It's like, oh, come on. Like, you get what <laughs> I'm saying? Can we just say it's a fraction of words? Can we just yeah. say it's a fraction of words? So, and it's not even that. It's a numerical representation of a fraction of a word, but I digress. It, it, we started this way because we believe that those learnings will pay dividends for us to, to you know, then inform the broader market and I'm very proud of the fact that it feels like we are definitely pioneering a lot of, you know, this notion of doing on-prem with open source models is, is not necessarily the norm from the start. It was to call the big API in the sky to a model hosted elsewhere. And while that has completely has a role, we're not denying it, um, there is an opportunity to really innovate and become a true practitioner. But in order to help people understand how to do that, you yourself have to become an expert practitioner. And so that's why we, we, we worked it this way. I mean, ultimately, we are um, benefiting from a big market move. And it's not to discount that we don't see fantastic growth with our accelerated servers, AI servers, if you want to call them that. But now you know, we have new opportunities with the AIPC. Um, and you've seen all of the announcements this week of you know, the infrastructure and broader solutions landscape that, that we're bringing to market. Again, they're informed by all of the work that we've done internally. One of the things that, that I always am impressed with is, is history to organizations. And Dell just celebrated its 40th birthday. Oh yeah. With Michael at the helm since he was 19. And it's always interesting to me to see history companies and how do they transform digitally and culturally? Yeah. But it, what I really got the sense of this week is everyone really being on the same page. Oh, for sure. Culturally, uh, to help Dell transform, to your point, to inform what you need to be doing for customers and how they can learn from Dell. Yeah. That was a, a theme that I thought was woven very strongly throughout the conference. Well, and I think that that's informed by the fact that, that we're doing this sort of, we're doing this at the same time, right? So it's not just like we have an internal operations and then we have products. We're literally, a, like we're going through a major transformation ourselves because we believe in this technology and the power that it represents. And therefore everyone is naturally on the same page. The thing that that I get worried about, and I've heard from press and analysts and customers is, you know, people saying, hey, I, I need you to help me do AI. And it's like, like that's, remember big data? Like, yeah. give me, a, I need to do Hadoop. It's like, well, why? Right. So it's, it's like, slow down. I'm happy to sell you stuff. That's what we do. But I'm more interested in helping you understand how you're going to use the technology but that should come at the end. It's people and process that you need to think your way through. So, you know, we also have an opportunity to provide services to do that. And in fact, the interesting thing is, is we used our own services organization to help us work through the prioritization of our own internal use cases. So again, another example of drinking our own champagne. Yeah, I so. Like it. so Matt, we're infrastructure people. We oh, yeah. love infrastructure and if we, Use your example of the internet. We can even go further back to 
the invention of the automobile? You know, sure. how did people use the automobile the same way that they used a horse? Yeah. How did e-commerce initial, initially come about? They use it the same way they did brick and mortar. Sure. It took some time to figure out. I get the sense we don't have that same cycle of time. Like, I, I don't think I've ever experienced a technology change such as AI. One of the biggest problems that we're experiencing around AI has been the lack of power sure. to, and cooling to, to do these systems. Talk to me about the, the importance of the individual components as you folks are, honestly, you're, you're several months ahead of most Fortune 100s on sure. the AI journey. What, what, what have been those learnings? Well, it's interesting. You know, the, the, there's, there's a lot to unpack there. And I think you're, you're right. You, you saw Jeff Clark's um, uh, keynote. He actually harkened back to the beginnings of the Industrial Revolution that, you know, that it is so fundamental. And that so fundamental is, I, I was like, you know, when you had an automobile, we had to build roads, right? Like we're in a place where we need to build new infrastructure because the today times are not the before times, right? It's very different. And so you saw at the keynote yesterday, a lot of focus on, um, you know, liquid cooling and other technologies to help deal with the thermal load associated with AI. The thing that, that, that I find really interesting is that this is truly a, a, a marked change in, in the nature of an application where the compute intensity is unbalanced versus where it was before, right? So we had years of balance where we understood how much storage networking and compute required for any given application. But this application is so compute intensive that we are stuffing an insane amount of computing power into a very small place. And what that leads to is energy and thermal density. And how do you deal with that? You, you have to extract all of that heat out of the systems. And, and people had asked me yesterday, like, is this really a time when we're finally gonna see liquid cooling become, you know, not exotic, but more mainstream? And I think for people who are are especially people who are developing foundation models, which is not a large number of people, but it is a, it's, it's a big, big part of the industry. Um, certainly, we're going to see liquid cooling technologies there. Um, but you also saw that we're, we're an endlessly pragmatic company. If you're doing inferencing, the density of your compute might not be as high. And so you saw that we have models, same model is capable of operating or I should say the same family has a variant that is liquid cooled and one that is air cooled. So it is different. It's, it's fundamentally different and the components are different. Networking, if you are fine tuning models or training models, there's a whole new fabric that needs to be built that interconnects the GPUs. When you're operating an LLM with inferencing, we found that you know, one of the best ways to do that is you don't run one instance of a model, we run hundreds of instances of models on individual GPUs. So you don't need to inter-network that. But if you're fine-tuning a model or developing a model from the ground up, you have, to, you have to interconnect all of those GPUs. And that requires a lot of networking expertise that is being developed in real time, right? So how do I create a massive high bandwidth, low latency network to feed the beast, if you will, to feed the model all of the of the data, which brings us to storage, which is if you're developing, you know, you hear about, you know, how many tokens, how many parameters, all of this stuff. That, that that's representations of storage, right? So there is a need for new storage architectures to feed, feed through the network to the GPU all of the data that is being an integrated into a model, either in a pre-training environment or in a fine-tuning environment. So every element is changing, and there's a new approach to um, how you do it. I got some great questions the other day about, are we ready for this? And I reminded folks that you know, we were a big player in supplying infrastructure to the folks who have now become what we call hyperscalers. And the lessons we learned there of how to build data centers. And we 
were a big innovator in the, in the concept of modular data centers. People thought of them as shipping containers. They were not shipping containers. They were <laughs> purpose-built modules. So like that is another opportunity where we are going to dust off that playbook for certain classes of customers where we're literally going to help them develop from soil to system, you know, from the ground up designing new data centers and data center types that, that can accommodate the intensity of the computing that's occurring with this technology. Yeah, I love Jeff Clark's TLDR, which was, it <laughs> reminds you of the human body. The GPU, CPU is the brain, the uh, heart is the network, yes. and the lungs, storage. I think that's a really great shortcut to think of it. Oh, for sure. I thought that was too. Last question for you. You said you've been in this role for about a year? I have, yes. What? You sound like you have one of the coolest jobs at Dell, I, by I, the way. I, I, I think I have the coolest job. You just might. What is on the horizon for you as you see the, the prioritization, the accomplishments, the impact made? What does next 12 months look like from your lens? Well, I think what we're looking to do is obviously scale up our internal ambitions and get those, you know, where they need to be. And I, I said to somebody the other day is that there's not a surface area within the company that AI will not touch. So there's so much opportunity to innovate with this technology across, you know, it's not going to just be those eight areas that I highlighted. It's going to be everything. Pervasive. Um, so internally, that's exciting. Um, and setting the course and just watching it go, I, you know, I, I hope to not be as busy as I am today uh, in, in, a, in a year from now, but I have a feeling I will be. But externally, I mean, the industry's learning in real time. What became the AI factory started with a conversation between myself and a, and a couple of my colleagues and the NVIDIA team. And we said to ourselves, how do we get technology in the hands of our customers that takes the guesswork out of deploying it? And what we, you know, what we discovered you know, over the preceding few months leading up to October, roughly, was that almost every enterprise use case was a RAG implementation, a retrieval augmented generation um, approach to uh, uh, this technology. And so the thought was, uh, and this is where the marketing people sort of like, Matt, stick to your, to your day <laughs> job. I was like, it's just like a box of rags. They're like, ah, uh. So, but we learn more through time. And then ultimately what the AI factory is, is our attempt at creating the easy button for enterprises to adopt this technology. So ever, over the next 12 months, I think we're seeing RAG move from sort of your basic vector search oriented stuff to now combinations of graph search and vector search. And then I'm excited about what we're seeing with age and augmented generation. So through time, I'm just excited to see how the not the technology, but the patterns of usage develop and how we capture those into um, solutions that just make it super simple, the easy button um, to innovate with AI. I'll take that easy button and it will bring me a, a glass of that Dell champagne and I'll have a sip. That sounds great, <laughs> but we'll toast. Exactly. Matt, keep innovating, great work. Thank you for joining Keith and me on the program today. Sure Maybe thing. Sharing the impact that internal journey is making across the globe. We appreciate your insights. Yeah, well, it's it's fun and I it's one of those things when you you can share with our customers. They are so grateful. Um Absolutely. so it's we'll it's, give it's great. It does. It does. And there's that that's currency these days. It sure is. Awesome, Matt. Thank you. Sure, thank you. For Matt Baker and Keith Townsend, I'm Lisa Martin. Thank you for tuning in to 65 on the road, sponsored by Solodyne.